Welcome everyone to the House of European Football here in Lyon for the draw for the knockout stages of the 23-24 UEFA Women's Champions League. I hope you all have had the chance to catch your breath after an exhilarating group stage that saw the best in the world put on brilliant performances and yet another great display of the Premier Club competition, the Women's Champions League. So it is no surprise that fans from all over the world tuned in to catch the action, action that was more accessible than ever before. With the final numbers still being tabulated, the live match audiences are projected to have quadrupled by the time our numbers are being confirmed. By far the highest ever so far. And fans across the globe really had every re reason to tune in, as competitiveness is ever increasing. The scoreline was never tighter. The number of matches with a goal difference of more than three has decreased substantially. And in this context, of course, I also can't help but talk about match day six, group C, with all quarter finalists or teams still in contention for the quarterfinals. And just looking here, the faces of PSG and Ajax, the officials here in the room, tells us how, how exciting it was and what a roller coaster of emotion it was to get to this stage, what a great effort it was. Congratulations and thank you so much for the drama. But of course also thank you and congratulations to all other teams who made it to the quarterfinals. A great effort from all of you. This is the first time since 2008-2009 that we have seven out of eight quarterfinalists from different countries, proving that our game is really growing across the continent. It's happening absolutely everywhere. And with the final in Bilbao at the horizon, at the beautiful San Mama Stadium, we can't wait but for the knockouts to start very soon. But let us keep a little bit longer with the progress, with the theme of progress and talk about the future of European women's club football. As announced late last year, that we will continue as of the 25-26 season with a whole new setup. We will evolve the Women's Champions League and build on our recent successes. An exciting new sporting and commercial concept which had also player welfare at the core consideration of it is in the pipeline and the only direction we will take is forward. But not only that, we will also create a second competition that gives more teams, players and coaches the chance to live the European team, uh, dream and a second chance to those teams early eliminated in the Women's Champions League. Up to 91 clubs may have the chance in the future to compete in this system where access and glory will be only earned on the pitch. But now back to why we're here today, the draw, the immediate future, the knockouts featuring reigning champions, eight times winner and incredible three debutants. Let's take a look at today's teams.
brilliant images and the best is yet still to come. Moving a little step closer to the draw now. To help us with today's draw, we have invited a player who truly performed on a global stage. A striker by profession who played across five different countries and representing her own country 51 times, scoring 19 goals in a brilliant 21-year career. She also knows a thing or two about what it takes to win this competition as she lifted the Champions League trophy already. And if that's not impressive enough, she's also won the golden boot at the 2017 UEFA Women's Euro. Fierce competitor who made everyone around her better. She now serves as a football services executive at Arsenal Football Club. Let's take a guess who she is. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm applause to Jody Taylor. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming, Jody. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. We caught up a little bit already before the draw, so forgive me if I ask a question twice, but these <laughs> people here haven't heard what I have heard already. Jody, you, you retired almost two months ago, but you went directly back into the game. Football did not lose you, no world trip for you. And I can finally say I found another successful here, football administrator that wanted to go in the, to the administration. Tell us why you took this job and, and what is it about? Well, firstly, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy to be taking the role at Arsenal on the administrative side of the game. Um, Despite I knew... having a coaching license yeah. as well, I mean, you're... Yeah. Well equipped to do everything else. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, no, I knew playing was coming to an end for me. And when I re-signed at Arsenal last year, I knew I wanted to retire at the club. And when this role came up, it was an absolute no-brainer to step away from playing and, and into the role. And in terms of the position, um, I worked closely with the director of women's football, uh, with the head coach and with the rest of the first team staff and players. So, yeah, it's an exciting time to be at the club and so far I'm really enjoying the role. Multi-talented asset for Arsenal and the club. I'm sure your head coach and the team is very happy to have you around. Jody, you had a really incredible, unique career path. I said you played across five countries, Canada, US, Australia, 17 different clubs. Uh, which is a unique experience. I mean, tell us, how did it shape you as a person, as a player? And perhaps any little secret funny story you'd like to share here with our audience? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate for the experiences that I had as a player. Um, I kind of went on the journey with women's football, starting from being amateur when I was younger, to semi-pro, onto fully professional and being able to, to play professionally around the world and in World Cups and European Championships and UEFA um, Champions League finals. So, um, yeah, it's been incredible to, to play college in America, to go over to Australia and play and to play around Europe as well. And, yeah, just really grateful um, for where the game has got to and, and I'm just excited to see where women's football is going to progress You've certainly to. seen it all. And as you allude to, you've seen the growth globally, right? You've seen the growth of individual competitions such as this one, uh, which you won with Lyon. Um, tell us still how important it is to win this competition, how important is it on a player's agenda to win it? And as everyone else, please feel free to make a prediction. <laughs> No, it's massive. I think in terms of uh, European club football, it's the biggest competition there is. So uh, as a player, it's a huge ambition and I think it's a goal that, that every player has. Um, fortunately, I was able to, to win the Champions League with Olympic Lyonnais a few years back. Um, but in terms of a prediction, Come on. It, it's a tough one. Um, you know, I think the, the standard is really high now and we've already seen some upsets. I'm going to sit on the fence with this one and I'm just excited to 
enjoy watching the quarterfinals. Real display of English diplomacy. <laughs> uh, uh, but I will not give up yet, so watch this space. Jody, thank you so much. The draw starts shortly. All responsibility <laughs> with you. I'm just your backup, your support. But before we start the draw, you know we always have to have one more member on stage, and this is our senior women's competition manager, David Guff, who will tell us more about the draw procedure. Hi Nadine, hi Jody, hi everyone. Fun part, serious part. Yeah, so this is the serious part. Fortunately today is not too complicated. The eight teams in today's draw have been seeded into two pots. The four group winners, FC Barcelona, Olympique Lyonnais, Paris Saint-Germain and Chelsea FC. And the four runners up, SL Benfica, SK Bran, AFC Ajax and BK Hecken. The four group winners will be drawn against a runner up from a different group. The runners up will play the first leg match at home. We will start by drawing a runner-up to be placed as the home team in quarterfinal one, and then we will draw a group winner as their opponent. We will repeat this process for the remaining ties. If a group winner is drawn to play against the runner-up from their group, the winner will be placed as the visiting team in the next tie, and another winner will be drawn. Should a clash be possible when drawing the last two ties, the teams will be drawn and assigned to the ties. I hope that's clear. Back to you, Nadine and Jody. That's crystal clear, as always. Almost no restriction other than not the same teams as in the group exactly. stage, right? Jody, please kick us off and draw the first team out of the runners up pot, steer the balls and tell us the first name in today's draw. SK Bran. SK Bran with an incredible good performance in this group stage. Debutant, one of the ones that made it. And please now stir this pot. We know Bran can't play Olympic Lyonnais because they had them already in the group stage. And Bran, let's see if you can do a whole draw without clash. That would be... FC Barcelona. FC Barcelona is possible. Our winners from 21 and 23 season. So Bran Barcelona. Please move on to the next tie, draw the balls, steer the pot, and tell us our next runner-up. The home team of quarter-final two. SL Benfica. Benfica, also with very impressive performances, even stealing Vars on the last match day a point. So who's Benfica's quarter-final? Opponent, please tell us. Can play against all three teams. Olympic Lyonnais. It is Olympic Lyonnais. Brilliant, thank you, Joni. Two more ties to go. And please, the next team out of the runners up pot. AFC Ajax. AFC Ajax. And the next debutant here, also really with an incredible, talented young team, will play against Ajax. We know who they can't play against. So let's see if you really manage to draw no clash. Come on, Jody. Paris Saint Germain. Just not. <laughs> but we will still re-invite you because you're an excellent draw ambassador. Still, it happens to everyone. Paris Saint-Germain goes to the next quarter-final, will be allocated automatically to quarter-final four. And we draw, uh, again, um, the remaining space, the last team to, to, to play against uh, Ajax. And that's clear because there was no other option. Chelsea FC. Ajax will play against Chelsea, wonderful. Okay, and we know it, but tell us the opponent of Paris Saint-Germain and the home team of the first leg. BK Hacken. BK Hacken. 
Well, that was already it. The quarterfinal draw already concluded. Some noises from the audience. I can't quite gather if positive or negative so far, but they're still smiling at me. So let's do a quick recap at our results. Quarterfinal one, Bran against Barcelona, Benfica against Lyonnais, Ajax against Chelsea, and Hecken against Paris Saint-Germain. Jody, maybe now a final prediction, a winner's prediction, or am I still... I know too many people on different teams, I can't say. <laughs> she's she's uh, hard, hard to get through, but anyways, maybe I'm coming back, back again. So we are now here to, uh, to conclude the semi-final draw. And David, there's just a very small procedure that we will exactly. need to understand too. We have four balls representing the winners of the quarterfinals. The winner of the first quarterfinal ball drawn will play the first leg at home against the winner of the second. Then we repeat the procedure, no restrictions apply. Perfect. So we simply draw the pathway now. And Jody, this is your pot now, only one pot. Please steer the balls and tell us the first team or winner of a certain quarter final. Winners of quarter final one. All right. They will be placed as the home team of semi final one. Stay again. The winners of quarter final three. The winners of quarter final three. Excellent. Two more balls to go. And tell us who first plays at home. The two remaining quarterfinals possible. The winners of quarterfinal two. The winners of quarterfinal two. Will be, of course. The winners of quarterfinal four. Wonderful. Also, all semi-final pathways are set. Let's take a quick look at the team. So semi-final one, we'll have Bran or Barcelona playing against Ajax or Chelsea. Semi-final two, Benfica or Olympique Lyonnais against Hecken or Paris Saint-Germain. So let's see what will come out of these matches and who absolutely in the end will be making it to the final. I think, again, I'm not even trying anymore. No prediction from us here. It's too tight. The underdogs have proven enough this season that they can annoy, annoy a few big names. So let's see what will be the outcome. And now the final draw simply for operational reasons. Exactly. We determine only for operational reasons which semi-final winners will be considered as the home team at the final in Bilbao. The first ball drawn will be the home team. Jody, your last job in this draw Tell us who is the home team in Bilbao. The winners of semi-final one. The winners of semi-final one. And please show us the, what's in the last ball so we've done everything correctly here. Winners of semi-final two. Winners of semi-final two. Indeed, everything correct, thanks to a great draw team, especially you. Thank you, Jody, so much. It's been wonderful, and I hope you would like to come back. You can do any draw in the world with me. I'm always happy to have you on my side. Thank you, David, as well, for your help. Thank you, everyone, for coming. This already concludes the draw for the knockout stages. Some interesting, yeah, hard ties ahead. We look forward to that, and we wish you, of course, all the very best of luck. Everyone, tune in or come to the matches. They will be played on the 19th and 20th of March with the return leg on the 27th and 28th of March. The match schedule will be 
finished very, very short after, shortly after the draw. And yeah, take care. Goodbye from Neo, and thank you very much, everyone, and good luck. Thank you.